I remember clearly when I was young, elephants would wander near our homes with ease. We were at one with elephants and we coexisted peacefully. But since then, things have changed a lot. As you can see, human population have increased hugely and livestock keeping is switching to agriculture. Coexistence has turned to conflict and there is growing resentment among Kenyan communities towards elephants. I am Lemayan Kennedy. I come from a nomadic pastoralist community, the Samburu. In our culture, elephants are considered to be fellow tribesmen. And when an elephant dies, we follow through the same rituals as the death of a human. We place green twigs on the carcass just as we, as we place flowers on our beloved ones. Sadly, this folklore is fading away now, and as more and more Samburus switch from pastoralism to agriculture, it's not uncommon for Samburus to kill elephants. I have loved elephants since when I was young. I remember running to the edges of our farm just to see their dung and footprints and the direction they have moved. I was always fascinated with their presence, yet at the same time terrified. Close to five years now, I have been working with Save the Elephants and I'm passionate about rekindling a closer relationship between my people and the elephants. It will be such a shame to lose an entire species that has been here longer than us. Hello from Kenya, my name is Nancy Odreo, the Head of Awareness at Save the Elephants. We are glad to be able to join you today and to be part of this year's Conservation Expo. Thank you, Kennedy, for setting the scene for today's presentation. My colleague Esther Serem and I are going to talk to you about the current challenges facing elephants, but also the different ways we are contributing towards solutions. Over the last couple of years, we've seen a reduction in poaching as the primary cause of elephant mortality. We are now seeing an increase in conflict, and this is not just threatening elephant survival. It's also threatening the livelihoods of communities that coexist with them. As keystone species, elephants are important in shaping landscapes, but they also hold significant cultural values to many communities. And in the face of habitat loss and habitat change, their conservation becomes that much more important. This year in particular, we've seen an increase in conflict that's exacerbated by drought. We've seen frequent movement of livestock into national reserves, which in turn drives elephants out of protected areas and into human settlements. Elephants are now damaging property, breaking water tanks in search of water, but also crop raiding extensively. It's unfortunate because the negative interactions are leading to either elephants being killed or injured by dis distressed communities or people getting injured or killed by elephants. Last year, one of our resident bulls called Sarara was speared as a result of conflict. He had a, a very big uh, spear sticking out on his side. Thankfully, the veterinary unit was able to tend to the wound and he got back on, on his feet. We also had an instance where a young girl walking to school encountered an elephant and was uh, severely wounded. Our response team was able to get to her on time and she received the urgent medical surgery that she needed. Unfortunately, such cases could be on the rise as conflict becomes more intensified and quite complex. But all hope is not lost. We are working on a toolbox of solutions to promote coexistence. And this include collaring and tracking elephants like Kir here. Um, Knowing where collared elephants are helps with early warning, which means our teams are able to, for example, intercept and um, steer elephants away from people and prevent potential injuries or damage. We are also working closely with communities to resolve conflict. Our rapid response unit in Arches Post, a town bordering Samburu National Reserve in Northern Kenya, are working with local partners to drive elephants away and keep people's homes uh, safe. I was able to speak to our director of uh, field operations, David Dublin. We also managed to visit uh, Wilson, one of our rapid response unit teams. We filmed this small snippet, take a look. 
So we are at Muslim Primary School where uh, elephants have broken down a part of their fence. Can you tell us what happened here? Muslim Primary School is one of the uh, areas or places that are severely uh, affected, damaged by these bulls. And one of the reasons or one of our suspicions is that they have a much bigger compound. There's a lot of acacia totilis that are all having the ports now. And the most unfortunate thing is that these bulls don't really have uh, entry and exit. They just, you know, once they get in, they just use every single um, uh, sort of section of the compound. And that is exactly why there's so much damage, as you can see, all the way in this straight line. There's all these posts that are all bending. We've just found some elephants really close to the road. Um, I think it's Rita from the Poetics, right, David? Yep. Yeah. That's, um, let's, let's, from the yeah, let's go take a look at them. very close to uh, human settlement, very close to the air, uh, air to road, close to uh, people here. And uh, they're not even with their family. And, uh, the reason being is because it's so dry that, you know, there's just not enough food. And they just, um, females can actually split like this uh, and survive, you know, for for reason of just looking for food. We are with Estes Wilson Lopuku visiting the carcass of a female elephant who was recently killed by residents near Archer's Post. Um, what, what happened to This elephant was killed after it killed two people here in Kiwanja. Oh. So that's why the community killed her. Was it shot? Yes, it was shot. It was quite sad because was going to be staying on that side where there are fewer people mm. but as you see the proximity of the people here and this is where she killed people maybe the community members um, could also identify her but initially she was very provoked uh, she was trying to cross a road she had a baby mm -hmm. and people are throwing rocks uh, people are hooting the motorbikes are going for her big trucks are going for her uh, you know just people hooting and she, she must have been really really mad. As you can see, our research team in Northern Kenya have their hands full with the drought and elephants reacting in new ways. Meanwhile, we are working on longer term solutions. And now I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Esther, who will tell you more. Esther, over to you in Sabo. Thank you, Nancy. And hi, everyone at WCN. I am Esther Sorem, the Community Outreach Manager based in the Savo field site. It is an honor today to represent Save the Elephants in this virtual expo and to tell you more about some of our work at the Human Elephant Coexistence Program. Most of the conflict issues across the elephant ranges involve various forms of agriculture. Communities are now learning to deal with elephants that have already learned that raiding is a good source of good food as well as fast nutrition. As Nancy highlighted, drought this year has had adverse effects on both elephants and communities and has also reduced agricultural yields. As a result, communities that depend on subsistence farming are really suffering this year. And this has also impacted on our field activities. Due to the success of our beehive fences, Save the Elephants have now helped communities to implement more deterrent methods. And we've been able to develop a unique human elephant coexistence toolbox. Communities are now able to implement various mitigation measures to reduce elephant damage at their homes, food storages, water tanks, and also farms. For those hearing about beehive fences for the first time, these are free hanging beehives interlinked with wire every 10 meters and are placed right at the entry point of elephants. Just to let you know, elephants are afraid of bees. Just to bring you back to the human elephant coexistence toolbox, these are elephant mitigation methods that have been trialed and tested across various um, sites. 
and they consist of a range of desired methods for empowering communities to protect their livelihoods from elephants. These mitigation measures include methods for farm boundary protection, early warning system, elephant compatible uh, you know, farming, elephant friendly uh, alternative livelihoods, tree protection also includes uh, shared space protection, for example, protecting school compounds from elephants. We have developed our first edition and we launched it during the World Elephant Day on the 12th August 2022. Please visit our STE Coexistence Toolbox website to learn more about this specific toolbox. Since there are no crops at the moment at the farms due to the drought here, rural communities are less bothered with crop raiding elephants. However, they have no food and they have no any income. So they still need our help in finding and also implementing the alternative livelihoods that are elephant friendly. For the communities that save the elephants are supporting, women are leading the charge. Due to the Kenya society gender-based roles, women are typically in charge of looking for water, firewood, and food. This morning, I was out in the field with Charity, one of the leading ladies and a very honored lady in the community. We were able to discuss about how she's been able to adapt to the current droughts and also discovered how the various um, toolbox methods have been able to help our protect farm from elephants. Charity lives in Savo. Her crops are failed due to the drought, but Save the Elephants is supporting farmers like Charity with alternative livelihoods such as poultry farming. Charity, please tell us how this chicken has helped you in your family. Sana sana hawa kuku na shukuru vile tumepata umu hadi wana nisaidia sana. Bihai fences are one of the methods that farmers like Charity use to keep crop raiding elephants away from their farms. To date, over 11,600 beehives have been installed across 87 sites in Africa and Asia. Charity also has a watchtower on her farm so she can keep an eye out for raiding elephants and warn our neighbors. Charity is an enterprising woman who is leading the charge and finding alternative ways to live in an ever-changing and challenging landscape. In addition, we support a bigger group of 42 women from the community called Mlambini Basket Weavers through the Women Enterprise Center and with alternative livelihood options. I was with some of them earlier today. Please take a look. Lambeni Basket Rivers is a group of 42 women from this community. Let's, let's go meet the ladies. We are going to hear from some of them about how the Women Enterprise Center has helped improve their lives. I mean, Saidi, I have to tell you that if you a basket, you have to pay a pocket money. Apart from weaving, Nabeni basket weavers engage in sewing of various beautiful customized products. Also, communities benefit from our elephant protection work. Thanks to our wonderful donors, we are able to support communities with non-conservation benefits. For example, if emergency drought relief for the school feeding programs that we started this year, medical and family planning help that includes supporting community health volunteers such as charity. Thank you. 
our wonderful and kind donors and friends and partners at WCN for your continuous and ongoing support. We were able to achieve all these because of you. Thank you for listening and I will hand you back to Nancy to tell you more. Thank you. Thanks, Asa. As you can see, the challenge is rising across the continent as populations increase and land use changes. There's an urgent need for affordable, sustainable solutions to equip communities rather than create dependencies. And while people in affected areas have the will to implement new solutions, they often lack funding to uh, buy the necessary materials, either a bag of cement for walls or ing ingredients for smelly elephant repellents, or even putting up and maintaining beehive fences. We need your continued general support to be able to provide the guidance needed, including our new microgrant scheme to support local communities. Working with partners like Kenya Wildlife Service, we also respond to conflict emergencies with support for both injured elephants and people. We also provide urgent medical care that would otherwise be unaffordable to local communities. With your donations, we can do all this and together continue our mission to secure a future for elephants. Thank you for joining us and for your time today. <laughs>